Friday afternoon at 4.30 and your boss calls you into his office. He says, look, I need your help and I need it now. We need some big ideas around here, some stupendously big ideas. We want to make this company great once again. I'm talking breakthrough. You know, big bang, blue sky. Now I know I don't say this often, but I really need you to think outside the box. Wow, you've never heard him talk like this before. And so you start to get excited. Then you actually start thinking big. You do a ton of research, you brainstorm, you lose sleep, and you stretch your brain. And finally you do it. You find it. You come up with a great idea. So first thing Monday morning, you go to present your idea for launching this company ahead. You're going to knock his socks off. Our world is going to be a better place. You show him your idea, and after some silence, the boss says, hmm, this looks expensive. You know, I appreciate how you're trying to push the boundaries, but look, this is a business. We've got to make some money, not spend it. Now, I want you to still think outside the box, but I want you to come up with something that's not quite so expensive. Arr. So off you go to generate another idea. This time, you come up with a less expensive idea that's even better than the first one. You show it to the boss, and he says, mm, This looks complicated. Now you realize, of course, that we've got to make this in our plan. I mean, I want you to keep thinking outside the box, but can you try to make sure that at least we can make the thing in our current facilities? You bring him another idea. Too disruptive. And another idea. Oh my gosh, that's too risky. And yet another idea. What on earth? That's just weird. Well, after a couple of months of this frustrating dance, you finally see it. You find it. The absolutely perfect idea. The one idea that you know will meet every last one of the requirements that were set. So, you start your presentation, and it seems to be going well. This time he doesn't ask any questions, though. And after a few minutes, he starts getting agitated and shouts, This is puny! I mean, I asked you to think outside the box, and you bring me this puny idea? What's wrong with you? Don't you know how to be creative? Normally, people at work can be pretty blasé, and I would dare say lazy. But when you bring them innovation, they suddenly kick into high gear and they start working overtime, undermining, blocking, maiming, debilitating, torpedoing, subverting, ignoring, and just plain killing your innocent, well-intentioned, and sometimes even your great ideas. Why do they act like creative people must be stopped? If this story sounds familiar to you, you're not alone. I've heard this story of frustration again and again and again from people in every kind of organization, in every kind of industry, and all around the globe. Of course it's not always the boss who plays the role of lead knucklehead in torpedoing innovation in your organization. Sometimes it's your customers, your clients, or your partners. Maybe it's your suppliers, your colleagues, or even your team. Sometimes it's even you who pulls the trigger and stops innovation dead. What if you could predict who was going to trample your creativity and how they were going to do it? What if you could figure out beforehand how innovative ideas are likely to get killed? So, how can a great idea get killed? Let me count the ways. One, it dies because it's not a great idea and you can't come up with a better one. Two, it wilts because your work group criticizes the idea mercilessly and they do so in public. Three, it drowns in your organization's stifling bureaucracy gets suffocated by risk aversion. Four, your idea gets ambushed by rivals or even customers in your industry, people who are threatened by it. Five, it gets whacked by a society that regulates your bold idea into meaningless drivel. Six, the technology delivers a coup de gras death blow by subjecting your idea to the heartless laws of nature. Of course you don't believe that creative people must be stopped, but wouldn't it be nice to know beforehand how to outsmart those innovation-killing knuckleheads who do?